film from 1968 shows glimpses of protest. They were burning draft cards. Demonstrations surrounding the war in Vietnam, and on November 21st of that year, President Lyndon Johnson was in the White House. And a Milwaukee trio was in custody. The newspaper called it a slaying. Then 18-year-old Malvatine Lampkins and two others played a part in a grocery store robbery. The article described gun whipping and shots fired. One man apparently did not move fast enough for the robbers. Took a sawed up shotgun and shot him in the chest. Who shoots a 78-year-old man in a grocery store? It was point blank range. He put the shotgun right to his chest and pulled the trigger. 78-year-old John Adornado was shopping with his wife. He was a gentle soul. He was a lover of people. He was rushed from the area of Buffalo and sent her to a hospital. The intern at the emergency room knew there was nothing he could do, and that intern just happened to be one of Adornado's 11 grandchildren. It took us by such shock. Another of his grandchildren, Celia Dodge, describes the impact of the murder. It devastated them. It really did. It broke the family apart. The robbers were caught and convicted of the crime, including Melvatine Lampkins. She was the lookout for the robbery. Michelle Herrings of the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force says Lampkins was sentenced to life in prison plus 60 years, but was given the chance to attend school during that time. Lampkins took advantage of the opportunity, and Herrings says she escaped in 1976 and somehow managed to escape again. 1979. Her whereabouts and activities have been unknown since. How could someone be missing out of a jail cell, out of a prison for 30 years? Yes, I think they deserve an explanation. I'd like to point a finger. I wouldn't know where to start. A crime taking place during a time of unrest and conflict. The fugitive bringing additional unrest to a family decades later. I don't feel vindictive. But I do feel she needs to be found. You might call this place... A couple thousand different characters. A superhero storage space. 700,000 plus comics. Popular superheroes, you could look at uh, Batman, Spider-Man, Superman. Superheroes do great things. They will leave Paul buildings in a single bound. He flies off of the back porch. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. He's always been a superhero to us. With a quick change, this four-year-old golden retriever goes from canine to Cape Crusader, a purebred blur of gold, a flash of fur you won't find at any comic book stores. Come, come. Though you might say he was born to wear a costume. The comet dog actually is his full name on his birth certificate. Like every good superhero, the Comet Dog has an important origin story. It really is a story about anybody who's missing someone they love. It's a universal truth. Missing someone is hard. Come. Comet's owner, Bill McGinnis, was looking for a way to deal with life while his long-term girlfriend, Juliana Olson, was in Iraq working as a nurse practitioner. I certainly hadn't never had anybody depart my life through the military. Balad, Iraq is the hub of all ill and injured transport. The long hours, the dangerous conditions. And it's my responsibility to not only receive them, stabilize them, but then also prep them for flight. Her efforts help save lives, but never enough. Olson recalls one case where a military canine died. But um, he defended his owner, his handler and lost his life as a four-legged veteran and saved the life of his owner. A moment shaking the foundation of even the toughest citizen soldier. We're all fighting for our country, but fighting day to day, we're fighting for the people next to us. You know, you're not thinking about yourself. You think about those around you and you think about your buddy. I don't think any of us can relate to what they go through over there. In an effort to keep her connected to friends and family, Guinness gave his dog a super makeover. Good dog. Stay. That gave rise to an online comic book. The name of the book is The Adventures of the Comic Dog. Missing someone is hard. 
He posted pictures of Comet in his super threads and began typing up a story of comfort for Olsen right in between all the casualties. Well, it helps you escape, because with all the bad noise, there's also a lot of good. Kind of digital coping mechanism meant for her eyes, and then the eyes of her fellow airmen and soldiers. I'm like, you have to come see this. And eventually, people they've never met. I'd get emails from mothers who were reading the stories to their children. Just heartwarming uh, to hear the impact that Comet was able to have in their lives. A comic book kind of canine. Out of 40. Not sold in stores. You're welcome. Have fun. Time is merely a measure of events. A distance between past and present. And a resource we all share. It was kind of scary. Until it runs out. Take it 15 minutes by 15 minutes. Are you lucky to be alive? Definitely. Tracy Gerber's time was nearly taken away back on October 14th. Near the place she and her husband play Monopoly. Can you make me a car? An internal struggle. A battleship. For survival yeah. played out. My husband Jeff had called. He said, I'm on the floor. What are, you, what are you doing there? And I said, I don't know what I'm doing on the floor. And she was talking a little off. I'm like, are, are you drunk? And I said, I wish I was drunk, then I'd have a reason to be on the floor. <laughs> and she had no perception anything was wrong with her. Her husband, Jeff, came home to find his once healthy wife immobilized on the carpet. She's moving one leg and not the other. I'm like, you're not OK. My husband had called 911. Um, Hours passed between the time Gerber was on the floor and the moment she arrived at Waukesha Memorial Hospital. abruptly terminated right there. Tests and images revealed next. Tracy was having a stroke. A blood clot was choking off the oxygen to her brain. Yeah. Threatening her very life. It was definitely some of the worst news you, you ever received. You could probably not walk again. Tracy was only 35. Um, they tell me it's pretty rare. Time is the essence. Of Time loss is brain loss. The clock began to dictate what could and couldn't be done to reverse her partial paralysis and save her life. Where it should be coming out here. And Doctors like Robert Lesniak couldn't use special drugs to restore the blood flow to Tracy's brain. Medication would be too risky because too much time passed. But for a special procedure similar to this one, time was on her side. Given her young age, that was a major contributing factor uh, that made it easier to navigate through the blood vessels we needed to. Lesniak performed an intra-arterial thrombectomy. That's a process where a small tube about the width of a dime is threaded from the patient's hip to the brain. We start passing our smaller tube up. There, the device can directly suction the clot out. The risks were many. The guarantees were few. Because she deserved that chance to, to try and live a normal life. To feel normal again. Tracy became the youngest patient at the hospital to undergo the procedure to remove a blockage slightly larger than the head of a pin. I just remember waking up in my room in the ICU. From there, the quality of the rest of Tracy's life would be measured moment by moment. Every 15 minutes, they would check to see um, if my if I could hold my hand. And they'd hold it up and. It it dropped. Minutes turned to hours. Hours turned to days. And on day two, Tracy turned the corner. The first moment I walked, that was that was pretty. Partial paralysis became part of her past. That was pretty cool. She jumped out of bed with a big smile on her face and came walking over and gave me a hug. And um, it was uh, it was one of the more gratifying moments in my career. Did I just pay you that money? Thanks in part to a procedure. <laughs> A woman whose well-being once hinged on minutes can enjoy many more moments, a patient given more quality time to spend with others. Jeremy Ross, Fox 6 News.